Hello and welcome back. We are here playing Victoria 3, doing a starting steps video for France in patch 1.5 open beta after the first update. Um, I think the thing to really focus on here, or the thing that we really want to mess about with, is the fact that France has six unique interest groups um, that are going to be new, or interest group bonuses. Uh, you know, their intelligentsia is worse, it gets prestige instead of migration, so that's not ideal. Uh, their petite bourgeoisie seems quite a bit better with the loyalists from standard of living increases minus state penalties for turmoil and they still get the loan interest rate over here their armed forces seems better for single player giving uh just plus offense instead of plus offense and defense but a larger amount of offense probably worse in multiplayer their trade unionist is slightly better if you want them to be politically powerful uh for you know political strength when receiving welfare and finally this is the big shebang and this is what we really want to test um in case this gets nerfed uh before uh you know in the next update we want to play a little bit with this and this is the 10% state construction efficiency bonus on the industrialists, which is just an absolutely insane bonus. We'll also, you know, kind of be tracking our way through some of the journal entries for France uh, throughout this run. We have the divided monarchist and the conquest of Algeria. And while this might not be a bit of a focus, there is a lot of unique flavor for France uh, coming from the Voice of the People DLC. France also has a bunch of unique companies, which were introduced in 1.5. Uh, these companies, uh, mainly the big bonus that they're giving is throughput on all of their, uh, you know, industries associated with them, and also construction bonus uh, towards producing this, which is going to go quite nicely with the industrialist construction bonus, and they're going to construct so, so fast. Um, just kind of going through it, uh, overall their companies are relatively middling. This is probably the best one, which you get for taking Constantine, and so uh, it is going to be, you know, iron and sulfur, and then 10% colonial growth speed. This is the equivalent of one level of institution, so this is pretty nice. Um, other than that, their companies uh, aren't that great. Uh, you know, this one is okay, and this is kind of all through here are all the companies. Uh, railway building throughput is extremely strong, and it's on coal. And, you know, you know, this paired with, uh, you know, uh, this up here, you will have coal and iron. And then you can also use the generic steel company, which is quite strong, which gives a further 10% construction speed bonus. You can see where we're going with here, getting like 50 50% construction speed on some of our industries. Notably, you will eventually be able to accept uh, either Rolonian or Flemish culture, I forget which it is, and so you will be able to, and you will also be railroaded into taking Belgium with uh, your journal entry for uh, natural French borders, or whatever it's called, and so you will be getting uh, the very strong company here, Society Anonymy John Cockrell, uh, which is the Belgium company, which gives 10% railway building throughput, and also uh, the company Compagnie du Con Congo, which requires uh, Wallonian be the primary culture in the country, uh, which we can get, and this will be kind of the best wood company. And so overall, while your companies are kind of middling, uh, gaining access early on to the Belgium companies, especially with like kind of a normal looking playthrough, which we're going to do, uh, kind of trying to optimize, but also go after journal entries. Normally you kind of wouldn't go after Algeria that hard, uh, except for the journal entry. And so we're going to kind of do a combination of this, or at least try to, uh, you know, we do have the conquest of Algeria. Algeria, the divided monarchists, and somewhere in here is, uh, you know, some more French natural borders of France. We have to research nationalism, so this is going to railroad us into taking Belgium. And these are kind of the things we're thinking about as it pertains to 1.5 specifically. Also, we have local goods prices, uh, which I've talked about quite a bit. And so some states we are going to want to build in because they have iron and coal and logging locally, which will allow us to produce the entire construction loop for iron frame buildings uh, because the tools require steel, the coal and iron require tools, uh, the logging uh, requires tools as well, and so you will want to have steel, tools, iron, logging, uh, coal, and iron all in one place. I said iron twice, and notably you also want the iron in the same place as the coal for the atmospheric engine pump, because the iron will use the atmospheric engine pump. And so we are going to want to put all of this in one spot, and there's a few states that are good for this, the best one probably being Rhone, uh, even though it's not the absolute best on the resources, you do have cotton plantations and silk, and this is pretty nice, but we have this, and then also uh, Avignon Limousin, uh, which doesn't have too much iron, but it's pretty good. Alsace-Lorraine, uh, which has a bunch of resources, overall best on the resources, doesn't have access to the silk and the cotton, and then finally, uh, down here in Constantine, which we will be taking pretty promptly, does pretty well on the iron mines. It's over 50 once you unify the entire thing, uh, and they do have the 10, or sorry, the 20% iron mines building throughput, but are somewhat hampered by the, uh, 
decrease construction efficiency, which we'll be overcoming, uh, you know, with our modifiers. And so generally speaking, because we have so much positive construction state construction efficiency modifiers, uh, this over this helps to overcome the negatives quite, quite well, uh, you know, as a result of us getting for the industrialists. And so we can make use of uh, land that would otherwise uh, maybe not be as useful in the Constantine here, uh, so which we're, we'll be, we will be building. So we have handled a lot of our diplo and our authority the way we are spending authority uh, we're gonna adjust this little bit here but we are putting a bunch of consumption taxes over here you can see on uh, wine services uh, luxury clothes luxury furniture we will be looking to uh, you know ramp up construction as quickly as possible and to that end the extra money will help we have 15 construction centers in the queue five in each of Rhone uh, Alsace Lorraine and uh, Avignon limousine uh, and so this will be pretty nicely we will take off the suppression uh, that starts on the intelligentsia and instead uh, bolster uh, the industrialists who we want to come up uh, as quickly as possible. Uh, as far as the diplomacy goes, we are improving relations uh, with several uh, nations, uh, namely nations who are, are maybe going to interfere with us and maybe we try want to try and get Spain into the customs union somewhere down the line. Portugal is also a decent shout. We're not improving relations with Prussia because we know that we will both be railroaded to go after each other's stuff and so having a good relation with them is not uh, you know in the long term cards as much we're also improving relations with Mexico because we'll probably help them out in the USA in exchange for reverse sways on the likes of California and Nevada which I think is particularly strong uh, as far as the diplomacy goes when we're talking about declaring interests this is one of the reasons why we want an interest in the Pacific Northwest at the start of the game we want an interest in the Andes because going after Peru Bolivia is good also South Africa is good to go after and we want an interest in North and South China in the event that we can reverse sway our way into uh, the Qing War that uh, UK is going to have in a way that looks good for us, whether it's joining the UK or even joining Xing and saving ourselves on some infamy. And so this will be uh, pretty good in terms of what we are spending our authority and our influence on. Now, companies, we are going to be swapping companies to resource-oriented ones very early, but we are going to just going to slot two relatively good companies in, uh, at least for this point in time. Actually, maybe we can... Uh, we can, if we can get the prosperity bonus for the birth rate, this will this one will actually be a good shout. But we don't we see that we don't have prosperity, but we have put in on the mobilization edict extra supplies. So this might be able to raise the price enough uh, for this to be good. And as far as the tech research is going, uh, we are going to go after we are going to be very mining oriented very early on, and so we're going to go water to boiler into nitroglycerin. Following that. I think we're going to go nationalism um, so that we can get uh, our claims on Belgium uh, and some of the other natural border places, and I think this will be a good shout. If I don't recall incorrectly, which I sometimes do and often do, I think we actually can improve relations uh, with uh, Sardinia Piedmont and get Savoy from that. So let's actually, instead of improving relations with maybe Russia for now, uh, let's improve relations with Sardinia Piedmont and Portugal, and maybe this will be a little bit of a better shout out because I think if we have good relations we can ask for this little section of Savoy back from them which will be uh, nice as well and so that's kind of a lot of the the beginning steps that we have taken uh, in order to get ready for this start as always you do want to check your PMs at game start and make sure you're on the latest and greatest of the PMs uh, you know especially in spots you see here we can make that more profitable we do start off with sweeteners that is often one where it is not slotted in at the best sort of one uh, very often and you will want to go free churches we are actually in an interesting situation where our intelligentsia doesn't have the migration attraction and so it's perhaps the case that we want to lean into the catholic church on the birth rate but the problem is is they might not like a lot of what we're doing and so um this is perhaps a sort of risk type thing we could take uh but uh for now we will just kind of uh, well, well, for now, we will uh, kneecap the, uh, the, uh, these guys a little bit uh, and just go in the secular direction because while the intelligentsia uh, in terms of bonuses is not as good, very often they will more support the laws we want. Very often philosophy department is not slotted in a game start. And we can put up to standardized filing system, but we'll just shelf this in our minds for now because we don't need the bureaucracy at this point in time. The really big and common one is going to be, uh, you know, the farms will obviously often not be using the tools. The 
these slaughterhouses will often not be in use and these will be profitable eventually and then also the fishing wharves will very often be on merchant guild owned and we want to move stuff towards being privately owned because it's going to help empower the industrialists and so this will be a good shout also to this end you know to try and empower the industrialists as quickly as possible we're probably going to lean in on logging camps and fishing wharves because they construct really fast they deep peasant pops and also these industries are relatively efficient now we see all these logging camps are on uh you know prioritize uh or just hardwood production we're gonna put them all on focused hardwood production and then in areas where we know we're going to be building we're gonna take them on and put them pr on prioritized softwood because this is where we are going to be consuming uh our wood for construction and so and the pm for focused hardwood is better than the pm for hardwood production um in terms of overall efficiency and so we're going to split it up in this regard and then if we see states that have a lot of furniture specifically we're going to make sure that they are on you know focused hardwood production as well and so avignon limousine is kind of the last one and we are going to put this on focused softwood production uh, as well here now, as far as law passes go, France is actually in a really good spot because they start off with a landowner with the orderly honest ideology and getting on laissez-faire is going to be really important to 1.5 because it gives you access to additional company. But these guys strongly endorse laissez-faire from the start. Now, I believe once we unpause, we will also get the ability to get a special character interaction from France uh, where we can uh, transform people who are not of legitimist or Bonapartist ideology. Uh, we can sway them over to being... Uh, or the honest. So, for example, the armed forces here, uh, we would be able to sway over. So, let's declare our opening war, which is going to just be Annex and Constantine here, uh, which is quite a bit of an infamy, but we can tolerate this. After this, we'll just subjugate the rest, uh, but this will give us immediate access into Togurt, uh, rather than having to wait an extended period of time after protectorating, and we will get this uh, pop on the divided uh, monarchists, I believe, here. Uh, let's uh, just set in these gentlemen here on our war uh, we will need to recruit a general we're just gonna look for someone who is uh, uh, this guy's legitimate but this is not the worst we in theory do want uh, more guys who are not oriented in that way uh, but we will put in there uh, and we will also recruit a general here and put in over there as well Republican guy will do just fine and we will occupy both the fronts here and we should have this divided monarchist thing pop and change unless it's just bugged out and we just don't have the character interaction in our terms of our you know 1.5 here which if we don't then we can't sway them to being orly honest but in any case we will be getting a very very quick law pass on uh, laissez-faire now in order to make it even faster we're actually going to lower taxes right now at game start with the intention of raising them later this will bring us up over 92 legitimacy uh which will give us minus 25 percent enactment time it's perhaps reasonable to float extra authority here as well uh just to enact really 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 fast uh but i think we're okay with uh you know kind of what we're what we're taking at this point in time uh and this will be uh kind of good uh as we move forward uh and so this is what we're doing we are going to put in a couple extra trade routes at game start we see we can run really big grain ones and we will put in on each of these uh and we can also run some fairly decently sized fabric ones and let's check dyes is going to be another one uh that is going to feature kind of prominently we especially do want to run large sorts of trade with portugal because we can get them into their customs union uh in theory relatively early and this would be a pretty big boon for us and so after we are running all these we could actually come back to the government uh, sort of uh, administrations and swap them up to standardized filing system and now we're just kind of at a good equilibrium point here uh, and we're still making money despite adding construction sectors we'll just deficit spend for a little bit once those construction centers finish that'll be fine also important to note is we are getting this pretty significant penalty from the divided monarchist event or on our Republican arrest, uh, ideology penalty, legit, uh, increased radicals, lower loyalists, and increased mo political movement radicalism. Uh, this is going to be fine, but it's just something to note and point out as we are, you know, starting out here. So this is the event I was talking about, pretenders to the throne. We can support the Bonapartists, the House Orleans, uh, the Legitimists, or down with the monarchy, uh, which would give interest pol group political strength to the intelligentsia, uh, and also lower uh, pop strata become more radical, which would actually kind of help us to 
generate enough radicalism in order to really get a lot of support for uh, events. But I think we're going to stand by the House of Orleans here at the very start, uh, which will increase the progress because we do like them uh, supporting the industrialists. And we also get the philosophy department. And I believe with this, we do unlock the character interaction where we can now sway him to the Orleanist, uh, which is going to also probably increase our legitimacy if we take an unpause. No, nope. well, the government should be more coherent. It's not, but it will give us more enactment chance, um, which is up to 60%, and so or success is up to 73%, and so we should get really nice advancements, and they should come pretty fast because we're over 90 legitimacy here, and so this should all feel pretty good for us. So we dust up uh, Constantine here, which was pretty easy, and then we have uh, adjusted trade routes slightly. We are, you know, now exporting some luxury goods to Qing and importing grain from Qing, uh, who didn't appear uh, there earlier on, and so this will be nice. We're going to get rid of that as well. Nah, it's going to cause a shortage. Uh, that's in our ammo factories. It's going to cause a shortage. We will make that up ourselves. Uh, but we do want to not run a negative tax malice here. And so we're going to, you know, go after some trade routes and just cut them down. That way we're not running as big a bit a big of a deficit. Uh, because we do want to incorporate Constantine because we want to get access to their company, uh, which is going to require that. And it is a bit of a slow incorporation. Also coming up, uh, we are building motor industries kind of right away here in Rhone. Uh, that's because we are currently importing uh, the motors from Great Britain at GameStart. We have zero local production, and so this will be the first thing we build. We are also noticed that we are running a little bit short on iron, so we will uh, get rid of the tariff. We're going to switch to free trade soon enough, and we will want to import iron just to kind of manage our early game, uh, you know, kind of construction sectors here, uh, which of course will kick us over on the authority. Uh, floating a little bit is okay Okay, but uh, you know we could just take a look at what has the worst revenue uh, and look to kind of undermine some of these a little bit we already have a little bit of fabric here and there uh, I think we don't have as much dyes I think we can eliminate this fabric and then also you know look and uh, see if Ching is now available yeah for a huge fabric route and so overall that'll save us a little bit but we'll have to build a government administration or two in just a sec so we actually get a little bit of a low roll here in a rolling in Bonapartist uh, here on our Republic party and the reason why this is a low roll is because they support interventionism so now instead of getting the very very nice bonus for state construction efficiency we're instead getting the malice for uh, manufacturing tax income so we're gonna slot this guy out of government we're gonna remove this gentleman uh, from the government and then we are going to exile the dissident uh, we unfortunately can't sway him so this Bonapartist will leave and we are replaced instead with a positivist now let's see can we put him in government looks like we can't put him in government to have him be popular however at the very least he will be happy with us uh and so ooh. He will be happy with us here and give us production research speed although unfortunately we're not getting the state construction efficiency anymore and we are no longer a level 90 legitimate and i don't think we want to run uh you know actually let's just run super low taxes for the time being but this is going to be a very very temporary measure adjust and turn until we pass laissez-faire and then we're going to ramp up the taxes and ramp up the construction so we have finished uh you know some of the construction we have started here in Rhone, and so we're getting the motor industries up. We also have the steel supplying it. We want to have everything locally uh, constructed all in the same spot uh, because this way we will not be as disaffected by MAPI or the market access price impact. If we have a, a glut of sell orders, for example, this will lower the local price. And so this means our industries will not be able to sell as profitably. And if we have a glut of buy orders, uh, this will increase the local price. And so we want to have our buy and sell orders all kind of in in one spot now what we are doing now in our little bit of construction of course we're running a couple shortages because we're trying to import iron uh, but what we will be doing is we're going to be bu building the iron which we need uh, and then we are going to be building it up to 11 in Alsace and Lorraine uh, that way we can slot in the iron company uh, in exchange for the French goods home goods we need to have one building at least level 11 and so we will be getting that here and be uh, you know getting off the home goods and onto the iron now the main reason 
we put interests in China in addition to being able to want to trade with them because their trade routes are really good is we wanted to be able to offer our support uh, to them in the event of a war which we knew was coming uh, and in exchange for a company using the reverse sway mechanic now they won't give us most of the like really good companies they especially have a bias towards giving us incorporated territories but they will give us outer Manchuria which is actually a very strong state because not only does it have good mappy but gold will appear here and this will be outstanding you know we have 20 logging camps 45 iron mines 32 coal mines and we have the gold incoming um, on top of giving us kind of a foothold in the area in the Manchuria strategic region now they will give it to us at the war start even if we don't help them but I think we're going to help them anyways and so what we're going to do is we are going to make sure that this has enough generals we don't really want a legitimist reformer should be fine we're going to mobilize these guys and we are going to move them uh, to the Great Shing HQ to make it hard for the UK to land uh, Great Shing uh, and here and we will also be looking to defend ourselves with the French army here which notably these guys are going to be consuming quite a bit of groceries because of their uh, mobilization PM which should help us to maintain this 5% birth rate bonus which is pretty nice here we haven't gotten onto the iron company yet but we will soon so we just passed laissez Fair, which very critically in 1.5 gives you access to another company so we won't even have to slot out a company in order to put our iron mine in and this will be critical I think we're just gonna chill on the laws for just a little bit uh, and instead you know have some level of legitimacy uh, we could you know do something like this but there's not really a whole ton of laws we want uh, from the industrials actually you know what there is we do want to get on to free trade free trade will be easy to pass but we don't need them in but we'll go on to free trade and since you know we're kind of going to be going into chill mode we really have the law we wanted in laissez-faire these guys notably will be giving us the 10% construction efficiency bonus now what we're going to do is we're going to increase the taxes back up uh, to a level where we are going Going to still be over the 75 breakpoint uh, but we are going to be making a lot more money now and we are going to use that money and leverage it and use it to build more construction now we're going to build a bit more construction in Alsace Lorraine because we know we have a lot of iron mines there so put those at the front of the queue and then we're going to put one of these at the back of the queue we see we are going to need a railway here and so we will put that at the front of the queue uh, but we do want to make sure these mines uh, construct first uh, that way we will be able to put our in our new company as fast as possible we see here with our 75 stack defending in china uh they will have to land in pretty heavily now there are some bugs regarding battles but they are going to have a really hard time landing in on that with the traditional landing malice and we have you know a similarly a very large company just defending us back here also we have slotted in the company and so now we will be getting you know nearly 20 percent throughput bonus and construction speed bonus towards these iron mines which are critically going to be what we're going to be building the absolute most of at the very start of the game because we're going to be adding construction sectors we also increased taxes because our legitimacy dropped anyways uh following an election and so we're just going to kind of crank up with this above 50 percent threshold and look to slowly pass this law um you know kind of moving forward i think that we are going to get off the orly honest relatively early uh but they're super happy with us right now and so this might make a parliamentary republic change a little bit easier especially because our industrialists do support it and so we might be able to put them in government you know the landowners are super happy because they're orly honest and we've just passed a few things that they've liked and so you know kind of moving forward we might be able to do something like this we're on the cusp of getting powerful so we'll have the 20 percent state construction efficiency bonus here and then an additional 35 percent roughly from our company so we're going to be getting 55 percent construction speed on our uh you know companies in fact on our company uh, things with companies in fact just before this gets to uh, voting what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna slot in the industrialist but we'll let it take a little bit faster uh, with a more legitimate thing and then I think we will be going for parliamentary Republic uh, again super super easy because these orly honest is such a nice interest group and they're so happy with us that we're not gonna force a rev spike a rev even with you know a huge minus on the loyalty from them because we've just passed laws that they like so we finished the conquest of Algeria uh, event chain here by conquering Constantine and then subjugating Togurt, uh, At Abeyes and Mascara all uh, as you know protectorates so they haven't flag changed so we get the proclamation of Algiers here and we can we have a choice between a few things we can gain a bunch of claims in a bunch of spots uh, no matter what and we have to decide between you know having loyalists and having migration attraction I think we're going to take the migration attraction uh, you know we could increase uh, the proclamation 
progress of the Orleanists by going this choice, uh, but we are suspecting that we're going to go parliamentary relatively soon anyways, and so I don't even think we're going to, you know, do this divided monarchists uh, event chain. I think we're just going to go Republican anyways, and so we're going to select this option here. And so we get a bunch of claims, and we will look to slowly incorporate these. Now, we do have to finish up this war uh, before we can continue another one, but we also notice something else here uh, in, uh, you know, what's going on in regards to our, uh, what is it, our companies, which is that the company for Constantine actually does not require that it's incorporated. Now, I think we still want to incorporate it anyways, uh, but what this means is we can actually do something a little bit more like this, where we are going to, you know, come up here temporarily, go into the decrees menu, uh, bring in a uh, violent suppression to decrease the state penalties from turmoil, bring this back down, uh, and what we will have is they will be getting now only minus 24% state construction efficiency. Now we are overcoming this with now plus 20% from our industrialist bonus, plus 35% from our companies, and so we will actually, when constructing some of this stuff here, we will actually have plus 30% state construction efficiency, uh, which is gonna be incredibly nice. Um, and this is of course halved uh, as a result of violent suppression, otherwise it'd be 50%. And so what we will do is we will just slap down 11 uh, iron mines here, we're going to put five, uh, and then we're going to put, uh, you know, uh, a couple construction sectors here, uh, and then we're going to put another six, and so it'll be iron mines first, uh, and then construction sectors, and then, uh, or sorry, let's actually add another two, so it'll be two construction sectors, six iron mines, then three construction sectors, then the rest of the iron mines, and then we will get a bit of a better iron company, uh, because the prosperity bonus steel mills building throughput, I don't think as is as good, or quite as good, as an entire level of an institution uh, in our uh, colonial affairs, effectively speaking, that we will be getting uh, from our company in Constantine here. Uh, but notably, anyone can conquer Constantine and get this bonus, and Constantine is going to have, you know, a relatively high amount of resources, and so this might be a strategy for general runs. Of course, France will not be happy that you took Constantine from them, but it's something you can do. We researched water to boilers, and we swapped that on. Very, very important tech, but now we're going to take a look at the urban centers and what we are going to do is specifically in the places where we know we have coal coming up we are also going to turn on gas street lights which will also be nice uh, and will give us extra infrastructure especially in these three areas which we are starting to build tall specifically but we'll also throw it uh, we can't throw it down in Constantine now we know we do have coal in a couple other places like French low counties and these will have a really cheap coal consumption and this will help stimulate the coal economy uh, in terms of local economies and so we're just going to do that and we're going to take another look here i don't think there's other areas and specifically that look uh, absolutely tremendous on coal uh, if i'm not mistaken that we've turned them all on yes we have uh, but this will stimulate the coal a little bit uh, as well as help us with some infrastructure so we don't have to build quite so many railroads as we are coming along um, you know the uk is having a bad time crying screaming throwing up because they can't land into a 75 stack of skirmish infantry uh, and we are now having like quite a big come up in terms of the money also you know uh in this current situation we actually really don't mind having high taxes for a couple of reasons but one of them is this minus attraction of interest groups and government modifier here uh we actually don't really like these interest groups very much and so uh this is super okay with us at least while we are trying to pass uh free trade now while we get close to this uh we will be swapping you know the the uh industrialist in and we aren't as uh you know uh happy about that uh, uh, but uh, hmm, we will just do that. It doesn't really matter that much. But we will slap these guys in government now. So now we kind of care, but we're bolstering this guy anyways. We're probably going to rake back this bolster once he gets a little bit more juice. Because I think this guy is just going to the races anyways. In fact, he's just going to the races. So we can stop bolstering. We can instead uh, you know, slap in a couple consumption taxes. Notably, the reason we're not taxing liquor here... In fact, our consumption taxes overall don't look that good, so we'll actually do something different. Uh, but the reason we're not taxing liquor here specifically uh, is that it taxes the lower rung pops disproportionately, and we would rather not uh, kind of engage in that at this current point in time, because it is going to decrease their SOL quite a bit. They consume it, uh, and we will show that in just a second, but we're going to slap down a couple decrees here. Uh, I think that we are going to go maybe uh, greener grass campaigns here in Rhone, and road maintenance here in Rhone. 
actually, let's go encourage resource industry in Rhone and look to build this one up tall. But uh, as I was saying, ooh, we could even do another decree. I think we won't and we'll instead just, you know, have a slight authority float. Um, but as I was uh, saying, what was I saying? Uh, yes, this was what I was saying. Uh, if we take a look at what needs look like, and we take a look at the consumption profile, we will see that the lower rung pop is consuming quite a bit of liquor. Now, even though the liquor would generate us a lot of money on the consumption tax, we don't want to tax it. And the reason being is that uh, in terms of a proportion of how much it affects your overall SOL and literacy and a bunch of positive things, um, it takes less money to bring up lower rung pops uh, in SOL than it does higher uh, rung pops because higher rung pops have exponential needs uh, so the more your wealth increases 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 the more your needs for luxury furniture increase in a non-linear way it's exponential and so this means you have diminishing marginal returns on the amount of uh, on the amount of mu SOL uh, wealth goes uh, or sorry on the amount of uh, SOL you get in exchange for having more money and so what you don't want to take is you don't want to take money from your poorer pops because their money is ridiculously efficient and increasing their SOL which has a bunch of positive effects one of them being just giving natural literacy but also giving qualifications so as a consequence of that we really want to avoid taxing liquor we would rather you know tax a little bit less but be targeted on the upper rung pops uh, type of things so you see here we don't see any of these luxury goods and the only one is the services here but we see what's the biggest thing for them services services luxury goods uh, and so this is why we are taxing uh, in this way in particular even though if it's not generating us the absolute uh, maximum amount of money uh, and so we will just continue on here trying to get free trade before going parliamentary republic we have free trade so we'll take a crack at presidential republic now or sorry, parliamentary republic, as it were. Uh, and uh, we, I think that this will be a relatively easy pass to go uh, because if we take a look, uh, you know, it doesn't make, the landowners still are giving their bonus because they're already so happy with us. Now, can we reform the government to make it a little bit more legitimate while passing? Not really, but we will have a decent shot at uh, passing this off the back of our industrialists here. Um, also, we do have a ton of money, and so we will look to add construction sectors. And I think this is the new heuristic for deciding where to add construction sectors. You're just going to sort uh, by upkeep and instead build there. Now, we know we can vertically integrate great better in Alsace and Lorraine because it has coal iron and can build steel and so we're going to favor those uh, but then also Rhone secondarily and uh, Burgundy does have a decent amount of iron now we are going to want to eventually have access to the steel company uh, the generic steel company and while we're not rushing it right now it is quite strong let's pull it up so we see it here French Steel Incorporated. It requires any French state have steel mills over level five. Now this is relatively easy uh, to achieve. And so what we're going to do is we are going to put this one here in Rhone on auto expand. And we're gonna look to push it up the level a little bit early, but we're also gonna create local demand here for steel before we get the level pushed up. And so we're gonna add, you know, several tooling workshops and then put this on auto expand. That should help out put it quite a bit. We will just take a quick look we do have enough infra for all this but we'll put a railway at the back in order to help support this uh, but we are going to be now in terms of our construction looking to push the steel mills up here and here's also where we have our only motor industry we're going to put this on auto expand as well and you are seeing stuff starting to churn through with Rhone eventually we're going to run out of labor there which is why we're doing greener grass and also encouraging resource industries um, you know once the industries get high enough we might swap to increase manufacturing but I think this will be okay for now we'll also uh slap in a cotton plantation because the demand we know that the local prices for cotton we will currently have way more consumption than production and so the local prices uh will be a little bit higher on the cotton and so this one will be especially profitable but overall we're not going to build too much agrarian stuff but this is uh you know the starting of the developing of us having a stronger industrial base here in Rhone specifically which also notably has lead which is going to be nice uh you know relative to Alsace Lorraine which doesn't quite have the lead um you know in 1.4 Alsace Lorraine was the place to build tall now I 
I really do think it's Roan. Uh, we are in on this, but we do need Bessemer Process before we can turn on this one here. Uh, but we will soon be having these Iron Mines and Constantine coming up. And Bessemer Process is natural spreading to us uh, currently. And so once this Nat spread finishes, we'll be in good shape on that regard. So speaking of Nat spread... I think what we're going to do is we're going to look to push the universities up uh, towards the direction of being, you know, uh, economies of scale uh, capped. And so we're just going to add another five universities here and look to tentatively increase this alongside. Normally around 200 construction is when uh, I like to increase the universities to level 21 for the, you know, beginner economies of scale cap. And so we'll do it partially. And so we will have, you know, kind of a developed queue here uh, that has, uh, you know, some iron coal these types of things now notably we are also going to want some explosives because we're currently researching uh nitroglycerin and we do have some local demand in the economy so we'll want to make sure we build a few of those uh, but we don't need an absolute tremendous amount we have in these three territories though auto expanding we want on uh we have it on the coal and the iron and the wood uh and now the tools coal iron wood and now the tools uh we will have all of these auto expanding uh which should kind of you know smooth out the economy overall uh and have us you know being able to construct here as cheaply as possible and these are going to be the best looking states so we're molding it in that direction as we clap great britain clap great shing we have done uh and also notably we went after peru bolivia but they backed down really quickly and so now they are a protectorate uh this is a 1.5 change you can no longer straight up dominion uh but we will be moving them up the change specifically uh we really want to get this state uh incorporated as quickly as possible because it gives access to a very strong company uh that is going to give a combination of railways and um sulfur here on top of 10% infrastructure, and we really like this, three industrialist approval. You know, we like our bonus a whole, whole lot because 20% construction is really nice. And so this will help us to maintain uh, our bonus here as France, where we are having, you know, the powerful uh, plus 20, uh, you know, democratic alliance, well, not the democratic alliance, the industrialist for this 20% construction. So we have made sure to keep an interest in Arabia uh, for the eventual conflict. Uh, just want to emphasize in 1.5, I do think developing a lot of uh, interests all over the world will be particularly valuable. And by having an interest in Arabia, we subjugated uh, Bahrain to get a permanent one. Um, this is going to allow us to, you know, uh, interfere and stick our fingers in pies. And so we can have a few options here. If we help Egypt, uh, uh, Ottomans will likely continue to declare wars on them. If we help Ottomans, uh, it's a less likely you know they'll do two rounds of conquest and then there won't be as many uh wars going on because this is a railroaded type of thing however i think we can get better uh you know we can go for transfer subjects and we can go for transfer states and in particular we know that a ton of oil appears in basara baghdad and mosul and so these seem like particularly good spots uh for us to take and kebab is willing to give us literally anything um anything we want other than the capital eastern thrace which does unlock quite a few companies um and so would be kind of good and so we'll take a quick look at some of their provinces but i'm guessing you know after a little bit of assessment uh that this is probably going to be the province we come to you know we get 20 percent agriculture and plantations building throughput they have rice available rice is very very over tuned right now a decent amount of sulfur and eventually eventually we will have uh you know access to uh uh, what is it a bunch of oil and this also gives us land access into Persia for running large volumes of trade with them so in our newly acquired Basara uh, we will be putting the rice on auto expand and the reason for this is rice as a building in this current iteration of 1.5 is super overtuned uh, we might see a nerf of it uh, but currently uh, relative to uh, 1.4 it has double the outputs double the inputs uh, and also double the amount of employment you see this is taking 9k to employ instead of 4.5k because uh, we are using the labor-saving PM here in harvesting tools. Uh, but it costs the same amount of construction. It still costs exactly 200 construction. So it's effectively two buildings for the price of one. And so while you normally would not want to build agrarian uh, kind of buildings very early, uh, this building is obscene. So uh, we will just click whatever kind of rice farms we manage to get uh, here and there. We'll put them on auto-expand. A whole other reason why Peru, Bolivia is probably the best expansion spot without it being particularly close. They have rice farms too. They have gold that appears 
Bolivia's gold's really strong. They have access to the company. You save on infamy by subjugating Bolivia beca before it becomes Peru Bolivia because you get the effectively you get an extra subjugation on Peru for free. And so this is very 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 strong. We're also going to be intervening in this war uh, for Dutch Guyana, uh, where it's, there is also uh, gold will appear here, and it also has rice. Uh, we will also set this rice farm in and put it on auto expand, uh, knowing that we have that there as well. Uh, you know, might not be able to necessarily employ up here, but this is going to, you know, help uh, our overall economy uh, by increasing the amount of grain in, in in a way that is really efficient uh, so that we won't see as many wheat farms and rye farms and these sorts of things. The low county starts with particularly high amount of coal and so what we have done is we've increased the level of coal here uh, to above 11 so that we can slot in the next company. I imagine that they probably get rid of this 11 uh, requirement clause but we will take this we will get rid of it and we will instead establish our unique coal mine. Now, so we could do this one. This is generic here. Uh, low count, uh, counties premium minerals, which would give fertilizer building throughput. But railway building throughputs a very strong modifier. And so we're going to put that in as our coal company. And this is going to allow us to construct coal a lot faster. And so now you're seeing we're starting to get some coherence here, um, you know, where we would be looking for... Uh, tools and uh, steel now at this point, but we are producing most of the loop uh, for construction. We are producing it faster and we're getting additional throughput on it. But uh, before we can get there, it is pretty nice that we are on this 5% birth rate here for the French Food Corporation. And we might even want to keep this one in for an extended period of time because this bonus is particularly uh, nice uh, as long as we can maintain the prosperity bonus at the very least. Uh, but I think the food companies often fall off and maybe we value the construction more. Uh, but we are, you know, producing a decent amount of coal mines, and so this will cause them to be produced even faster. You know, 35% construction plus the 20% uh, from our unique interest group, it uh, really goes a long way. Uh, and so uh, this war is coming along. We're helping out a little bit. We're not, like, full mobilized for it, uh, but we are basically ensuring that, uh, you know, uh, these guys will be winning. Uh, we don't necessarily care about the progress too much. Uh, we do want to actually low roll here uh, because being stuck at 2% is not very good for us. We would want to stall down uh, to below uh, the percentage. So I think we're going to take here. Uh, we're going to make some loyalists, get minus enactment chance, and then we will get a redraft um, where we will still get, uh, you know, the 20% uh, or 21% uh, off of these guys. We see that our righteous government has gone, uh, our government's gone up to 95 we decrease taxes for a moment, and so we'll re-increase the taxes back up. But we are trying to juggle it at 90% because we're able to maintain that. And also, something to keep in mind is we now have our Suede Orleanist um, uh, thing that we can do. We are just going to hold it in reserve. We could maybe exile this guy, uh, you know, after a little bit of time, but we can't exile him while he's rebellious. But if we exiled him and made him an Orleanist, this would help a little bit because the Orleanists are happy with us. Again, because we pass laissez-faire and free trade. Whoops, our industrialists actually no longer just natively support the law, uh, which is a bit unfortunate. We would have uh, liked to get on, uh, you know, uh, this uh, parliamentary republic relatively early, but we're also not, com we don't completely hate these Orleanists uh, and monarchy because it's working pretty well for us. We're still righteous, which is one of the main reasons to go on to parliamentary republic is you can get a more righteous government and you can get kind of the better people in Gov. And so we'll look to pass some laws that are maybe useful to, uh, uh, for us uh, with this particular setup. And also the Catholic Church will uh, de-radicalize here, uh, which will be nice for the increased education access access, which we will not be getting, uh, you know, we will not be getting any more. So we've decided to go for homesteading, and we actually have a pretty nice opportunity here in terms of the event we rolled, which is minus 25% enactment time. And the more of these modifiers you stack, the more powerful they are, and we are going to have minus 25% enactment time from being righteous after we reduce taxes, and so this will be really fast enactment time. Uh, you know, once we get a couple of these, it will cost us some bureaucracy, and it will give some radicalism to the movement we don't care about anyways, and so we're going to do this. We're going to come back down here, and then we will, you know, absolutely fly on this homesteading passing, and the reason we decided to go for homesteading a little bit is because uh, our monarch is not even, uh, you know, a landowner, so if we completely 
maybe kneecap the landowners, not too big a deal. Uh, and so this will allow us to maybe get the intelligentsia in government and maybe stomp out the Catholic Church, something like this. We can still sway to Orleanists uh, a little bit later, as long as it's not I, uh, as long as it's not incompatible with the Orleanists. Maybe the rural folk just are, uh, but this will be helpful for us. I think they also have to be in government. Let's see, uh, is in government, so we have to do that uh, as well. But uh, this will be kind of a nice little, uh, a nice little move we can make right now, particularly because this Orleanist ideology group is just very, very strong. Because you're going to make them really happy, and then you can pass anything through them without them being revolutionary. And so. Nice. So we started bankrolling um, Sardini Piedmont a little while back for two reasons. One, we do want to get Savoy back uh, through the event chain, but two, if they're in our customs union, which they're asking to join now, uh, then what will happen is it'll be really hard for, they will not support, you know, uh, the creation of Italy, and so this gives us one less kind of power to worry about uh, in this sphere. So I think that the strategy of uh, trying to bankroll and uh, get them in your customs union relatively early on is probably going to be pretty good on addition to the fact that we accept a lot of their pops if I'm not mistaken and so we will be able to siphon off their pops and so we're probably going to look to start expanding the customs union relatively soon uh, maybe not just quite yet because we haven't reached a critical mass of money uh, but we are having you know uh, we're doing really well on the money we're not at max taxes and we can almost uh, we almost have enough legitimacy to go to max taxes we do have to keep an eye on this landowner thing because they are starting to get upset the the happy Happiness is starting to way off, wear off, but if you just like, if we unpause and look at this, homesteading is absolutely flying and has a really good enactment chance, so we should be able to get it through and then maybe reform the government, you know, to look a little bit more like this uh, after that happens, and so I think that'll be put us in some good shape. So we slot in the generic steel company here, which currently gives us prosperity bonus that we are in really interested in, 10% state construction efficiency, very strong. But, as you can see, productivity is low, and so this is going to make it hard for us to get this bonus. And so we're going to go out of our way to try and increase productivity. And the way you do this, there's a lot of ways. We can increase the price of steel. This is one way we can do it. We can decrease the price of the inputs, because the way productivity is calculated is the price of all the output goods minus the input goods divided by the number of laborers uh, and then uh, multiplied by 52 for every week of the year and this is how you get this 6.1 figure uh, another thing we will be doing in order to increase productivity by the way it's it's low now because it's being flooded into the market we're going to go on water tube boiler even if it's not profitable, the idea being, so we went from 6.1 to 15.6, right? Because we are reducing the number of laborers. So even if water tube boiler is not good for increasing profits, it is generally going to be good for increasing productivity unless coal is wildly expensive, uh, for example. And the reason is because it decreases the number of laborers, which are the cheapest type of workers. Uh, and so, uh, and this will decrease the denominator that you're dividing this minus this over the employment by. And so this will help out a lot. So will building in one place and giving a lot of throughput. The throughput from the company itself is going to be really useful. And also what we can do is we can try and decrease the price of these goods and increase the price of these goods. So specifically, we're going to blast tools here in Rhone, uh, which is going to increase the demand for steel there locally and also decrease the input goods. Perfect. And we're also going to go out of our way to export, uh, you know, uh, steel if we can, which is generally kind of a bit of a hard export, but our steel is a little bit flooded into the market, so we can actually export it right now. And then on top of this, I believe we have some trade routes currently uh, for coal that we are exporting coal and we are going to kill these trade routes and we are going to... Uh, we're going to kill that trade route importing that uh, we're going to kill that trade route we're going to kill this trade route even though it's profitable we're going to kill this trade route even though it's profitable and this will decrease the price of coal in our market um, and after we have done all that i wouldn't be surprised if our productivity uh you know manages to get back up uh once we kind of let it tick and think a little bit really we just kind of have zero productivity what's with you my guys why is the productivity zero Hmm, I think it's because uh, steel is flooding in the market. So we do see this price coming down. So we're just going to try and create demand for steel then um, as we as we go along. And uh, in particular, try and reduce the price of the inputs as well. We're not going to export the inputs. You see, uh, the steel price is depressed relative to the input goods price. And steel uh, is one of the few industries that's most sensitive to this. And so we will go out of our way to try and increase this. And also only build steel here because throughput also increases output 
outputs and inputs without increasing laborers. So higher and higher throughput is another good way to get productivity. Uh, but yeah, so currently the, the tanked price of steel uh, is going to make this impossible. But the reason price of steel is tanked is because we had to build up to level six of this in the beginning anyways um in order to make it so that we could unlock the company so this will be kind of a work in progress as we try and get extra construction efficiency off of our company here uh in addition to you know the industrialist bonus of france we unlock bessemer process which has a few things going on uh namely we're also gonna get this piece with brunette oh well we'll enforce on them in just a second here but bessemer process is going to give us a pm that is going to increase the inputs and the outputs but this is going to you know further still it's going to be more profitable uh but it's going to also tank the price of steel so we might not see the productivity bonus uh really that quickly uh but the price of steel is back down again or it will be you know if we let it tick to the next monday we see this price come down again uh but we will be able to maybe get an equilibrium employment that's a little bit lower uh and is still going to be prosperous but with besmer process uh we do unlock the ability to slot in our other companies so we're going to disable this company here and we are going to establish this company here uh which is going to give us uh you know uh quality growth speed uh which i think is a little bit better than steel throughput although the steel throughput would have helped for this industry specifically also when we eventually get the sulfur and railway company uh the pairing of iron and sulfur is going to be a little bit worse but for now uh we are going to kind of value this uh you know colony growth speed which is roughly the equivalent of a single institution or a single level of the institution and so this is going to be quite nice for us uh we also it's been five years roughly since we uh subjugated togurt so we're coming up on the end of the truce here and so we can ask them will you kindly reduce autonomy they will accept and so they will become a dominion which is now going to be the new chain as we try and go for algeria principally uh you know in terms of what we have done here backroom deals uh, we will say probably stay focused on the law. We could take a little bit of a risk and go for the minus enactment time, but we have no setbacks. We're passing at a decent enough clip. We're just going to go with the, uh, the stay focused on the law. These guys become our dominions. Uh, we will do the same here with Ait, uh, our Abbas. Uh, they will also accept. And then Mascara in just a little bit when the truce is up, we will also ask, uh, you know, in seven months here, as the car is just extraordinarily loud outside, um, we are kind of coming up on you know fully fully incorporating algeria or at least getting it all uh the correct color to help the roan steel mills which have a majority of uh you know our steel is in roan here and also we have a ton of you know manufacturers here now what we're going to do is we're actually going to cancel our resource edict here and instead we are going to slot in our uh let's come to decrees uh an encourage manufacturing industry and this throughput while on the short term it's going to make these less productive because it's going to take the price of steel oh wow it even made it more productive uh uh, but okay there we go uh with this tanked steel price eventually we will reach points where it is more productive and again trying to uh hit this prosperity bonus here for the state construction efficiency so we finished getting homesteading and currently uh you know the industrialists aren't super super happy with us and if they were happy with us we might actually reform like this uh bring the catholic church into government and try and pass uh you know public health insurance but instead i think we're gonna go for private health insurance which I think is a lot more valuable now in patch 1.5. They've nerfed overall population growth. And so, uh, you know, getting on the health insurance relatively early is going to be a little bit better. And also, it is going to help us to lock in our industrialist bonus a little bit more. Um, as, you know, uh, we don't want to dip below this 10% figure. Uh, and so this is going to feel pretty good. However, we do not care too much about passing it as quickly as possible. And so uh, we are going to increase taxes here as well. Uh, which is going to allow us to further ramp up construction. Uh, you know, it is Victor Hugo, he's exiled. Uh, he begins to accumulate more power and he denounces the king as a traitor to France. Hmm. So uh, we can make, uh, well, I think we are okay with him coming because we actually want to get parliamentary republic. But the, here's the problem. We want to get parliamentary republic, not presidential republic, and they always agitate uh, for the other one. But, um... I guess we'll go with this one. Uh, you know, 
Don't hate him being around. Uh, we can't really put the intelligentsia in government yet. We gotta see what happens, uh, you know, next election. Uh, but we will instead coast on this legitimacy here. Um, you know, which is still, 81's still decent. Uh, we'll have slower law passes, but with this, uh, we can come back in. And it's been a while since we've increased construction because we've been uh, continuing to decrease the taxes uh, to get th stuff through faster. And so we can come in and what we're gonna do is we're gonna add mainly principally in places where uh, construction is cheap uh, and we will see that a lot of these are starting to be the places where we're building tall already uh, we'll add a smattering you know uh, in places that aren't necessarily going to have um, the full chains that we want uh, but you know having iron mines and be able, being able to build up uh, the, uh, the the regular construction sectors is going to be pretty good and overall these are the places where it's cheapest and so this will bring us probably to about 300 ish construction or so um, which we can more than afford and then I think after this we do want to consider uh, bringing the universities up to 21 or at least a little bit higher uh, so that we can get a little bit better on the tech so here in regards to Austria we are actually not so keen with this Austria Prussia play. We're not so keen on Prussia doing particularly well because we do have to return Rhineland and North Rhine from them uh, later on, and so we will sway. But there's really not a whole lot we want from them uh, because we do not want to return state CB for the full uh, you know amount of infamy. We could go for war reps, but I think what we're going to do is we're going to ask for an obligation on Austria, which is traditionally something that's maybe not that valuable, just to get us involved in this war, uh, which is going to you know be nice for us. Uh, because we can mobilize and, you know, throw in on uh, a couple of these fronts uh, and just, uh, you know, have a little bit of a good time. Uh, we don't need to necessarily contribute a ton to this war, uh, but, you know, us alone should be sufficient. We're also helping out Egypt here, uh, but we won't contribute very much. Egypt's roughly got this handled, and we're subjugating Zulu, going for a little bit of a slower expansion style here. Uh, instead of annexing them, we're going to subjugate them. It's going to take, like, 20 years, but then eventually we'll get in on Transvaal, very strong mappy orania very strong mappy and so this will feel really good and if somehow it plays out that we want to go for a little bit more infamy we can go through gaza but we have designs right on belgium specifically and this is going to cost us a lot of infamy and so i figured we would save a little infamy by not full annexing zulu here uh while we wait for our event to trigger which requires us to have uh, a certain type of gentleman, uh, as it were, uh, in the uh, the interest group. So we need to have a jingoist, a fascist, an authoritarian, or a bonapartist in government uh, just for a moment. So, you know, if we had an authoritarian or, uh, you know, a jingoist or this type of thing, we would just slot him in government and slot him out. Uh, but until then, we can just wait and eventually we'll roll one in some interest group and we'll put him in gov and it'll be nice for us, not for... Wallonia and Belgium, obviously. So as far as tech goes, we are starting in on modern sewage. I think that this um, plus five construction sector max level, because you actually care about where your construction sectors are built, I think this is actually gonna be pretty valuable now because if we go to like where we're paying for construction sectors and we look how much we're paying, the cheap, very cheapest ones are gonna be like Alsace-Lorraine would be very cheap for us to build in, but we can't build any more in it. And so as we're approaching, you know, Rhone maxing out, Arva, uh, Arva Yon limousine uh, maxing out and like kind of the places we've been building maxing out this will be pretty useful also uh, we declared in he up here for the reason of being able to sway Mexico they're having a native uprising and they're more than happy to give us a state uh, and so you know this will be really valuable uh, kind of uh, to some extent but they're not really willing to give us it looks like kind of the type of state we want which is one that we would actually have market access to so we could take partial states in Arizona New Mexico Utah, it's etc. But I think what we'll instead take is the customs union off of them, uh, and we will be able to siphon off pops from them and just help them out a little. Uh, you know, we are landing up here against Prussia, uh, coming on in while we're pushing this way, uh, you know, and this is going to, uh, the landings are a little bit slower, uh, and, but the, the mechanics overall, now you can't do double and triple landings. Instead, we're using our 60 stack Navy to land our 70 stack army, and we will be getting in, and once we get in, we should be pushing on Prussia, and we should be able to enforce on Prussia, and so this will all feel very good. I think we'll take this, uh, considering we're already looking in good shape for getting this private health insurance in, and we don't care too much about passing it as quickly as possible.
And so we have successfully uh, guaranteed Austria-German leadership. Now, it's possible we should have played a little bit more towards the status quo, but I just kind of wanted to help the guy who we agreed to help out out. Uh, but I think that we are going to conclude this episode here. Uh, you know, we have done a lot to come on, kind of come on up. We secured Algeria, but I think the big thing to write home about is, you know, how quickly uh, we can uh, ramp the GDP up uh, and ramp construction up, um, you know, in this 1.5 world where, you know, economies are depressed because of MAPI and they're also depressed because of increased construction costs and despite this we're still able to ramp up quite a lot um, you know for the companies we did swap off the steel we couldn't quite make that work uh, but this is going to be pretty good on the coal uh, giving us the railway building throughput that's going to be pretty nice for us we won't have to build as many railways we see we do have a lot of iron and coal and as we build more of these the steel company will be good later down the road um, it's nice that we're getting this birth rate as well as well as putting the health institution but we managed to pass several laws you know getting all laissez-faire free trade homesteading um, these types of things and our construction right now for most of the stuff we're building is quite 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 good uh, because we have a construction uh, bonus on you know this iron of 35% plus the additional 20% from here, plus, you know, where we are building locally specifically, we are going to have decent bonuses. So for example, in Rhone, where we have 15 construction sectors, we will have six state construction efficiency. Uh, so six plus 35, that's 41, plus an additional 20, 61% construction efficiency compared to kind of a 1.4, you'd be getting closer to, you know, 12 to 15% uh, percent construction efficiency, something like this. I forget the exact number uh, because the state construction efficiency was nerfed um, from that uh, but this is this is quite quite nice uh, and you know we are building at least on those things uh, even faster now the tooling workshops take forever to build this type of thing but these iron mines uh, do fly quite a bit and they are being constructed relatively quickly and so this is going to be you know powerful for us it is allowing us to you know ramp up you know if we take a look at other people's GDPs so our GDP is basically doubled over the span of eight to nine years here right uh, but if we look at like other people's GDPs and we look at their type of lines you know Great Britain uh, and okay, the AI is not very good, but like Great Britain, if we take a look at their line, uh, you know, in a similar time period, uh, they've gone from, you know, like, I think they start like close to 40 million, uh, like 38, something like this. They've gone barely any and we've like doubled and we haven't even annexed that much territory. The territory we have annexed has been Constantine, uh, which is 1.3 million GDP and Manchuria, uh, you know, which is 1 million GDP. So this is not where it's coming from. It's coming from this absolutely insane construction bonus. Bonus. You know, we took Constantine here, and then I don't even, I can't even see on the graph where we got Manchuria. Uh, maybe it was this like right here. Uh, but this is going to be very nice uh, in terms of bringing up our mappy though, uh, because it's going to be, uh, we're going to be able to produce gold here, tools here, these types of things. Nice logging camps we'll probably throw down. Uh, we'll probably throw down. We'll probably put down a tooling workshop here, because uh, that'll be nice locally. And, you know, kind of similar thing over here, doing quite well. Um, the turmoil has gone down quite a bit. We are, have been incorporating it. We will get in them. And uh, next episode, what we will be looking to do is we'll be looking to kind of secure Peru, Bolivia a little bit more, uh, you know, reducing their autonomy and also going for Belgium and the Belgian companies, as well as, you know, having set ourselves up uh, for maybe going ahead of time uh, for getting more companies ourselves here because we don't have much of these uh, left to do. So I'm thinking something like regulatory bodies towards uh, investment banks, something like this starting to get into the tier three companies uh although uh steel frame buildings is very very strong and uh, mech uh mechanized looms has decreased in its overall power um in this patch and so maybe we don't push as hard uh, on this tech specifically but just kind of you know in summary uh construction is insane on france and so uh yeah i hope you enjoyed this episode feel free to like comment subscribe uh do the youtube algorithm stuff and other than that have a good day.